Hello, I'm Dr. Glick with St. Peter's Bone and Joint, and uh, we wanted to talk more today about uh, the meniscus anatomy and uh, the reasons that people will have an injury there, how we treat that as well for them. Uh, meniscus injury in the knee is one of the most common injuries that we see and uh, one of the most common things we talk to patients about and try to help un them understand why they have a tear, why they have an injury, and how we then address that for them. We also want to remind you that you can go to the website as well at spbj.net and see these videos and other good information as well. So please uh, check out uh, the website for additional information. So let's talk more about the meniscus anatomy, why there's a tear, and then how we treat that as well too. Here what we're looking at is the cartilage that uh, is a smooth surface that glides, that helps the joint glide by as we move it. Then we look more directly here at the meniscus. In, in this knee model, the meniscus is this um, beige or orange colored um, tissue here, and this is really uh, effectively a shock absorber for the knee, uh, or another description would be a cushion in the knee that helps stabilize and provide support to the knee as well too. Uh, if we look closely here, what we can see is that uh, on the inside of the knee we've got both this medial meniscus and then we also see the lateral meniscus over here. So you have one both on the inside or the inner part of the knee and one on the outer part of the knee as well too, so medial and lateral. Um, we can see here that this creates a cushion or shock absorber effect. So if we to put weight on the knee and, and walk or pivot or turn, this then helps stabilize the knee and provides uh, that a helpful effect for us. Anatomically, the issue uh, when tears are created are typically because this has a poor blood supply. And the blood supply actually comes from the outside in, and so we're all more prone to this area of tearing. If we look at the meniscus, uh, it's uh, an important but not necessarily a big structure, and so typically when there's a tear, it's often in this back part of the knee. It's a re usually a reasonably small tear that we can talk about addressing surgically if it has a persistent uh, problem with pain or affecting daily function for patients. The way that we consider treating this surgically is uh, we can use an arthroscope or a small camera on the inside of the knee. And what I've got here is a probe. This is the kind of probe that we use at the time of surgery. Then through a small incision, can go in and, and uh, test this meniscus, see where it may be torn, and then address that surgically. Often what we'll do is simply go in, and if there's a tear in this part back here, we'll simply clip that part out. Uh, that part may have been flipping, moving, and causing pain and flame in the knee. By going and simply clipping this out, then we remove that uh, area of irritation in the knee, and that usually will lead to a pretty quick recovery. Now, the other option for treatment, uh, depending on the type of tear we may have, is if there's a tear that's a larger type of a tear, and especially if it's a younger uh, person that has, would have a good blood supply to this area, we can also treat this surgically with a repair. And typically, that repair is uh, placing a suture uh, across that and then letting that heal over time. Uh, the recovery process uh, is typically the first week we will try to slow you down, let you heal. Uh, by using crutches, trying to decrease your weight bearing, decrease the swelling in the knee. We'll then also see you back within clinic in roughly a week, start physical therapy as well. And most patients uh, really are in pretty good shape and returning to the majority of the regular daily activities two to three weeks from the surgery. Thank you.